Is there, is there anybody else that's coming? No, this is okay. it from our side. Well, this was a video deposition of Jeff Neumeyer in the matter of Josie Southland, Carter Canyon versus Colonial Mining Company, Colonial Mining Company versus Mr. Wayne Crawford, Ms. Pauline Crawford, Ms. Janelle Crawford, Colon Colonial Mining Company, the Utah Corporation, Evan Johnson, and Mr. Paul Southland. Um, it's being held at Canyon Lodge Group in Salt Lake City, Utah on June 29th of 2015. The time is now 9.52 a.m. Will counsel please state your name and who they represent for the record? Yeah, Cole Cannon on behalf of the plaintiffs and counterclaim defendants, except for Wayne Crawford, who is pro se in this matter. Sean Drenny here on behalf of Salt Lake City, who is attorney in fact for Colonia Mining Company. Did you sign this by the testimony about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you go? I do. Okay. Morning, Jeff. Will you please. Uh, State and spell your name for the record, please. Yeah, it's uh, Jeff, Jeffrey, and it's R Y no E. And it's N I E R M E Y E R Niermeyer. Thank you. Is it okay if I call you Jeff today? Yes, sir. All right. Um, Jeff, as you probably know, my name's Cole Cannon. I represent the plaintiffs in this matter as well as most of the counterclaim defendants. Um, have you ever had your deposition taken before? Yes, I have. Okay. Um, so just a short refresher, you're probably aware of the procedure here. We have a stenographer here with us today uh, who will be transcribing our, our written, our spoken words. And it's important that you let me fully ask my question before you answer the question. I'll allow you the same courtesy to fully answer my question before I move on to the next one. That will help us uh, maintain a nice, clean record. Um, you recognize you're under oath and all statements are made under penalty of perjury today? I do. Is there anything that you've taken that might inhibit any, any reason that your answers may be inhibited, such as um, consumption of alcohol or other drugs today? Nope. Okay. Um, there will be periodically throughout the deposition some objections, I'm assuming, from Mr. Draney today. And uh, notwithstanding those objections, your obligation is to answer my questions unless he actually instructs you not to answer the question, um, in which case there may or may not be a follow-up deposition regarding those matters. Um, in front of you is a binder full of exhibits we're going to talk about. I will do my best to kind of go through these events chronologically, but it is a very rich history, and so we might be bouncing around a little bit. And Rusty just joined us. Um, morning, Rusty. Morning. Hello, Rusty. Sorry, I didn't realize you were coming this morning, so we just barely got on the record. Do you want to state an appearance? You're an attorney. Okay. okay. Without further ado, um, what is your current uh, role, your, your employment, Mr. Neumeyer? I'm the director of the Salt Lake City Department of Public Utilities. Okay. And how long have you been the director? Since uh, 2007, June. And prior to that, what was your role? I was the deputy director of the Department of Public Utilities. And how long have you been with the department? Been with the department since October of 1991. All right. Do you have any professional licenses? I'm a licensed uh, professional engineer. All right. Is that a civil engineer? Civil engineer. Okay. Um, we're here talking about the lawsuit that our videographer identified uh, related to what I call the Argenta property. Um, and to be clear, we have not noticed this deposition in your capacity as a director of public utilities, but you personally. And so the, que the answers to your questions um, should be based on your personal experience. Uh, what I call your five senses, what you've heard, what you've seen, uh, what you know, what you've done, um, those kinds of things. Uh, it's possible that we will notice up a deposition uh, for Salt Lake City, which will bind Salt Lake City, and it might, in fact, end up being you again. But today we're talking about your personal experience. Um, do you know who Evan Johnson is? Yes. When did you first learn of Evan Johnson? I think 
in the first interaction with the department of Evan Johnson was 1995, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I know this is a very loaded question, but what is the nature of the relationship between you and Evan Johnson? I wouldn't say we have any relationship. Okay. So I've met her once. All right. When was that? Came into my office five, six, seven years ago. What was the purpose? Um, he wanted to talk about Big Ditch. And what was the result, if anything? Nothing. Okay. And Big Ditch, you're referring to Big Ditch Irrigation Company? Correct. This is the same. Was it the issue surrounding the lawsuit that went all the way to the Supreme Court? No, it was before the lawsuit. Okay. Um, do you know who Paul Southam is? I've met him. What is your relationship with Paul? No relationship with Paul. All right. You said you met him. For what purpose? Uh, again, he came into our office once or twice. I know he's also met with uh, some outside counsel and Mr. Vetter on other occasions. But again, his purpose was to talk about uh, Big Ditch. Okay. Have you ever spoken with uh, Paul or Evan regarding the subject matter of this lawsuit? No. Okay. Um, do you know who Josie Southam is? Um, I've never met her, but I assume it's Paul Southam's wife. Okay. I want to understand who's really directing the matters of this lawsuit. So you work for Salt Lake City Public Utilities, and Mr. Draney made his appearance on behalf of Salt Lake City, which is the attorney, in fact, for Colonia Mining Company. Is that right? That's correct. Um, are you the point person for the matters related to this lawsuit for Salt Lake City? Um, yeah, I guess I would be the point person. So, Are you the one who's choosing who gets sued and who doesn't get sued? No. When we hire outside counsel, we allow the strategy to be developed and what they view as the best legal strategy. Um, when I hire experts, I tend to rely on their expertise. Okay. Um, another big picture question. I'm trying to understand exactly what you are trying to accomplish through the lawsuit. What we're trying to do is defend the title of the colonial interest and ultimately purchase that land. Okay. Um, we'll talk a little bit more, well, in much more detail about that property specifically a little later. Um, first, uh, do you know who Wayne Crawford is? I do know Wayne. What is your relationship, if any, with Wayne? I have no relationship with him. Have you ever met with Wayne? Um, this goes back to the 90s. I don't recall meeting with him. I had a lawsuit with him, so I saw him in court. Okay. What was the nature of that lawsuit? Uh, it was relationship to a ditch called Farn Harper, where he basically tried to uh, move Farn Harper water up to Big Cottonwood Canyon. Okay. And that was a problem with Salt Lake City? Did it want to have the water moved? That was interfering with Salt Lake City's water rights, correct? Okay. Um, I've noticed in just kind of reading some of the history between public utilities and JLC, let me pause for a second, do you know what JLC is? It's a limited liability company that Evan Johnson often uses. Okay. You recognize that it's been used to file various change applications with the state? That's correct. Okay. Um, I glean from kind of my record, and we'll talk in more detail about it, that there's been a general um, objection from Salt Lake City, from your department specifically, uh, in these change applications that have been filed when the change application is attempting to move water into Big Cottonwood Canyon. Is that a fair statement? Objection, Cole. What has this got to do with this lawsuit? We're talking about a real property title issue not a water rights question. So what exactly is your objection? I said, I'm trying to find out the relevancy of the question. Okay. The relevancy is that two times now in open court, Mr. Scott Martin, who's also counsel in this matter, has articulated to the judge that Salt Lake City has a compelling interest to protect the watershed. And therefore, Salt Lake City has a vested interest in this property specifically. And I want to understand in more detail exactly what those, those policies are how this property contributes to the watershed goals of Salt Lake City, 
the goals generally related to water transfers, et cetera. And it also goes to the issue of whether this lawsuit is brought in good faith. And so I think it's well within my rights to ask these questions. But nonetheless, you're free to answer my question. You'll repeat the question, please. Yeah, if you could repeat your question. Michelle, would you repeat the question? Mm -hmm. And you recognize that it's used to fill various change for... So I think it'd be here. Do you want to just uh, restate it? I believe. Right. Cool. Um, no, I think it'd be. Okay, I'll just re ask a question. There you go. She's kind of, what I said was I've gleaned from the record that it's a standing objection from your department to um, oppose, was a double negative, it's a standing policy of your department to oppose water transfers from other areas up to the canyon, the Cottonwood Canyon. Is that a fair statement? Not quite. I think what the city's policy is is to protect our water rights from interference. And because in Big Cottonwood Canyon and Little Cottonwood Canyon, we own a majority of those water rights. Every time somebody proposes to move water up into those basins, it basically interferes with our existing water rights. So we have a strong policy to protect our water rights. OK. Um, have you ever been to the property, which is the subject matter of this lawsuit? Been by it on the road and looked at it from the road. Is and that I it? Haven't. In my younger years, I probably skied through it. Okay. How long ago was that? 10, 15 years ago. Okay. But in, let's say, the last decade, you haven't got out of your car and actually walked the property, correct? I have not. Um, has, when I say name defendants, I'm referring to Wayne Crawford, Josie Southam, Paul Southam, Evan Johnson, Janiel Crawford, who's now deceased, and Pauline Crawford. So when I say name defendants, that's who I'm referring to. Um, has Salt Lake City hired any private investigators to investigate any of these name defendants? Objection that goes to work product. Are you instructing not to answer? Yeah, I am. Okay, and you're doing that in your capacity as his attorney? Is Jeff Niermeyer's attorney? Well, just raise the objection. You know who I'm representing. Move on. So you're asking, you're telling Jeff not to answer the question. You heard me say that. Okay. Um, have you directed Salt Lake City uh, Police Department to investigate any of the named defendants? Um, there was an investigation to look at some claims by Mr. Evan Johnson. Um, I can't remember, six or seven years ago, where it appears he was uh, threatening uh, violence. So they did look into that. What was the result of the investigation? Um, they viewed that they didn't feel that he would threaten or do the violence that he was implying in his chain of emails. Who did he threaten? Uh, just general bloodshed. Okay. Did you take that as a personal affront to Jeff Niermeyer? No, I'm not worried, but I do worry about my staff and my watershed officers. Um, when somebody uh, threatens uh, violence. If you could please turn with me to Exhibit 16 in your binder. Um, this is going to be a little unorthodox how I'm going to do this as far as the exhibits go. I have a binder that's got about 20 exhibits in it. and. I'm going to be entering them into the deposition record, not necessarily sequentially. And so I will mark this as Plaintiff's Exhibit 16, if, that, if there's no objection. And then we can just have the binder, uh, which would be the easiest reference point for all of us. So, Do you want to have her mark his copy? Yes, I do. Yeah, that would be the best way to do it.
take a moment, if you would, Jeff, and take a look at this exhibit. Let me know if you recognize it. Appears to be the answer. Um, I don't know what the right legal term is, but the complaint that was filed okay. by Colonia one or did, two, excuse me. Did you see this prior to it being filed? Um, versions, yes. All right. to direct you to page 13 of that exhibit, paragraph 22. Which reads, Unbeknownst to the three directors, Mr. Wayne Crawford, Ms. Pauline Crawford, Ms. Janelle Crawford, created a corporate entity named Colonia Mining Company, Colonia II, and registered it with the state of Utah in June of 2007. Do you think that that was a wrongful act on the part of these named defendants? I do. Why? Because I think they started out with bad faith in an attempt to defraud somebody of land that wasn't, didn't belong to them. All right. Who do you think this land belongs to? At this point, I think it belongs to the original Colonia Company and their shareholders. Right. Is it relevant to you at all that, well, let me ask, have you ever met a shareholder of this company? I have not. Have you ever seen a stock certificate for this company? I have not. What is your basis to believe that Colonia Mining Company 1, we'll call it to distinguish it from Colonia Mining Company 2, what is your basis to believe that Colonial Mining Company 1 owns this property? Well, the records that are available out there showed that they were the owners of that property, that it was still in that original company's name. Um, turn with me to page 16 of this complaint, please. Page 16? 16, yep. Please turn your attention to paragraph 41, which reads, The intentional, fraudulent, and unjust acts of Mr. Wayne Crawford, Ms. Pauline Crawford, Ms. Janelle Crawford, Mr. Paul Southam, and Mr. Evan Johnson were taken in whole or in part under their various alter ego corporate entities and therefore support the piercing of the corporate veil and imposition of personal liability. I want to understand, um, do you have any facts that support this theory that the corporate ego, corporate entities of JLC um, and or Cardiff Canyon LLC and or Colonia Mining 2 should be pierced? That's a compound question, I'll object. I'll I'll take part, that piece I'll, of time. I'll take it in pieces, yeah, that's a fair objection. Um, do you have any facts to support your basis that the corporate entity, JLC, should be pierced as against Evan Johnson and Paul Southland? Over dozens and dozens of emails, Evan Johnson and JLC go back interchangeably. They make little distinctions. Sometimes in these emails, Evan touts about what's his. He doesn't talk about what JLC is. He always personalizes it. Binders and binders of emails from Evan Johnson. So. Do you actually print up your emails from Evan Johnson? I used to until I got so many binders I gave it up. And then with the advantages of the computer technology, you can just search for them now. Okay. For what purpose did you put Evan's emails in binders in the first place? Just because he sends so many ranting and raving emails about various things. <laughs> Kept track of them. Was that unique as to Evan? No, I did Evan, Jim Garside. So. Anybody else? 
um, have root directories of, but those are the ones that was just, you know, he would put out these, you know, 40 or 50 page type emails, so I would just print them out so I didn't have to look at them. But. Okay. Um, so one of the facts you identified is that in these numerous emails from Mr. Johnson to you, he ostensibly interchanges between JLC and Evan Johnson personally. Is that what I'm to understand? All the time, yes. Okay. Is there anything else? Um, just the way he uh, writes in his, in his emails, that he personalizes these transactions not as a JLC but as his. Okay. Um, is there any indicator on his signature line of whether he's speaking for Evan Johnson personally or JLC? 